Seeking mental health care can be overwhelming and even scary, but it doesn't have to be. I'm Dr. Josephine McNary, and I'm committed to making this process easier for you. Each week, my expert guest and I unravel a different form of therapeutic intervention in order to bring comfort and understanding and to help you get back to your true self. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mind Stories. Today, I have the pleasure to talk with Rachel Fleischman, licensed social worker, psychotherapist, registered expressive arts therapist, workshop facilitator, and speaker who over the last two decades has supported thousands of humans to deepen their creativity, feel understood, and love themselves fiercely. Through her private practice, Bliss Counseling, and a unique movement system she developed called Dance Your Bliss, Rachel works with individuals and couples and has expertise in crisis management, trust, body image, premarital and marital issues, sex therapy, depression, anxiety, life transition, and panic disorder, to name a few. She is currently developing new ebooks and coursework surrounding sleep, health, body centered psychotherapy, and mindfulness workshops. She has developed the relaxed and real model for psychotherapists. She can regularly be found leading international workshops and programs at conferences, corporate retreats, and wellness centers. Her sought after mental health expertise has been featured on numerous podcasts and magazines. Rachel also aims to give back to her local community by volunteering at the San Francisco Public Libraries and leads a variety of pro bono movement activities at organizations such as the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Today, we talk about embodied psychotherapy and her approach to treatment using this modality. Welcome, Rachel. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much, Josephine. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so we've I know we've been wanting to do this podcast for a long time to talk about what you do best, yes. which is embodied psychotherapy. Yes, I have so much to say, and this is really good for me because I can tighten it and be efficient and, uh, you know, listeners can read great books. There's so much. First of all, what a gift to live in a body, huh? We live in a body. As everyone can hear, my body is going through a little something, um, a, a little throatiness which is such a basic. We live in a body and I believe we're tense individuals. And as psychotherapists, if we can all remember um, those who are listeners who are psychotherapists, those who aren't, we start out kind of anxious. I feel as therapists, we have to, and, and as psychiatrists, I can only imagine we have to know so much. We have so little time. So I learned in so many different ways and with lots of different teachers how to relax the body and actually be in my embodied presence while practicing therapy. So on my side hustle, if you will, I've actually been leading workshops in this for about 25 years. And I've been leading group fitness in one way or another since the 90s. I tried to do the math on that. I think that's over 30 years. What I've learned in that is we kind of live from here up. And the listener's not seeing this. That's from the chin up. And we have this whole body we can be with. As practitioners, we generally sit in a chair. Um, for the most part, I've heard you interview people who have blown my mind who are taking walks with clients. I'm generally not doing that, although during pandemic, but I start with my body and there's a lot I can say about that specifically, but I treat my body as here's this vehicle. Here's this whole me. Something's probably not perfectly right. Back pain, knee pain today. It's just a little bit of throat stuff. What can I do to engage everything? And there's a whole lot of processes I can share but what can I actually do to engage in everything? And the first thing is, am I anxious? The answer is usually a little bit, right? As we're doing this work, we're a little bit, oh, I want to really want to know my client. I really want to get them. So as clients or as practitioners, the first thing is just coming into how can I relax all the things? And I have a whole technique that I teach in my movement classes to help people become a more relaxed therapist. Yeah. As you were talking, I'm thinking every... Well, maybe not everyone. A lot of people operate at this just baseline level of anxiety at all times. Yes. Yes. Um, And I got into this work because my level at a certain point in my 20s went sky high. It went sky high Uh, before graduate school, a little bit during graduate school, a little bit after different points in my life. So I immersed myself in different body oriented treatments. Some of them where you lay on a table and there's some hands on work. And then some of them I'm learning, I wouldn't call them psychotherapies, but energy work like Tai Chi, Qigong, and of course, dance. For me, my belief is the world, I mean, I'm sort of obsessed, the world would be better if we all danced a little bit a lot of the time. Now, Josephine, that's not for everyone, but study after study after study shows us that of all the different movement systems, dance, Tai Chi, and Qigong are in the top three to support depression, 
anxiety, grief, trauma, loneliness. You know, how cool is that? Why do you think so? Okay, I'll tell you why I think, and I love telling you why I think. There is nothing when we're in it that gets us in the zone faster, has us leave our prefrontal cortex quicker, and has us come into a state of, forgive the word, bliss. It's a little woo-woo. And when Joseph Campbell said it, he just meant get purposeful and focused, actually. We've misconstrued his follow your bliss into like leprechaun and fabulous land. It's more purposeful. So when we dance and move in the Qigong, Tai Chi, and Dance Your Bliss methods, and so many more, Nia and ecstatic dance and five rhythms, I could go on and on. We are letting go of all of the tension. With a good practitioner, we're being... Re- also, we could start with yoga too. I should say yoga was probably number four. Come on. We are letting go of perfection. We are letting go of stiffness just by the act of stretching and moving and letting things go like a cat, you know, that just kind of otherworldliness of letting the joints be and letting the looseness happen is magical, quite honestly. This is going to sound a little woo-woo, but every listener can try a little dance in their living room with their kid and see this works. We're not talking about being an excellent dancer, by the way. We're just talking about the letting go of it. If we do this in a group, there's the communal joy of it. It's also some, uh, more than some, a lot of evidence to show that Dance and movement can improve our sense of empathy and compassion for one another. I have loved learning that. There's something about seeing more clearly when we dance. When I think of Tai Chi and Qigong, I think of it as very different than dance. Yes. Tai Chi and Qigong are, um, I think, originally actually martial arts that were slowed down. Forgive me, uh, I'm going to misconstrue into very beautiful segmented form a form, just as you do karate, a form. But it's also ritual, Josephine. Every time a good practitioner leads a dance class, just like every time if you and I learned the quarter of the Tai Chi form, we'd be going through a system and ritual is habit made holy. I love the way Twyla Tharp, the dancer and choreographer, talks about ritual. So they're all rituals. They all have a beginning, middle, and end. Just like your yoga class, you start in this kind of sweet way. There might be an om. The body opens up, it goes into a flow. So even though some of them have specific movements and steps, there's a sense of ritual. They're all done in barefoot for the most part. And Mm. there is massive breath work involved in all of those movement systems. The other thing I was thinking about was that the study that came out that talked about, was it ballroom dancing? Seniors who did ballroom dancing actually were something about a lower risk for developing dementia. There are so many studies. Thank you for bringing that up because it's easy for me to forget that. That's a, that's a bad joke to forget that dementia. Sorry, listeners, I can do bad with jokes. Um, it is so important to recognize that movement and ballroom dance especially would be hard for you and me. There is so much to remember there, my friends. The movement of the arm, the bringing the shoulders back, the connection with your partner. So it's quite mathematical, actually. And it's also a beautiful ritual. It's incredibly empowering. You feel grace. You feel your body very present. Uh, Movement and dance and fitness are extremely beneficial in supporting folks so that they don't develop dementia and memory issues. I wish I could say uh, it is 100% a sure thing, but there's genetics and there's life factors absolutely moving your body. And that can also be tennis and that can also be pickleball. I really want to give a shout out that if we move our body in some way, we can become better practitioners of psychotherapy, of psychiatry. We become better patients because we're very present to the moment. The phone is down, we're sitting. And sometimes we can share a moment if we want to with our patients, which is something since we've been on Zoom for a couple of years now, it's still about 80% of my patients see me via Zoom. We do a little movement together if they feel it. And I'm happy to share that with you. I find it extremely it brings our closeness. It brings us together. What is that movement that you do with? So generally, I say to my person, and I sometimes say this to my 8 a.m.s, Josephine, I start early. It's not that early, but it's a little early. I say, hey, you. I never say, you look tired. But I, I start with a very nice stretch. I start with a kitty cat stretch, right? Where everything is lengthening and I'm doing that with them and the feet, you know, which you can't see and the listener can't see me, but my arms, unless they're on YouTube, but my arms are stretched up and my fingers are interlaced. And Everything sort of opens up. And you think of the Amy Cuddy TED talk about the superwoman pose that so many millions of us have seen. 
my God, was that helpful. But it's also just the beginning. We begin by just coming into our superhero pose, which is open your shoulders, bring a hand to heart and hand to belly. Take a moment and close the eyes. Can you be present with what's here? And there's a little yes around that. I join them as well. I'll peek a little, but I join them so they don't feel self-conscious. And for your listeners, again, hand on belly, hand on heart, soft shoulders. And we start to just drop into the body as you would in a Qigong or a yoga practice, which feels so divine. I'm also very careful to watch the particulars that we're not getting sleepy. And I would never do this with someone who has severe trauma. We want to keep eyes open for safety, obviously. And depending on who they are and what they need, we're going to do this for a couple of minutes. For my clients uh, who I've known for years, but who have been through some trauma, I will take them through a guided imagery where they can move their body and also come into something a little bit similar. As you're talking, it makes me wonder, what brought you to this type of therapy? Yeah, I love that question. Who doesn't love talking about themselves, right? So I've always loved movement and dance, and I was an aerobics instructor in college. I've never been a phenomenal mover. Good enough. Stretchy. I love it. I'm not a perfectionist by nature. So I continue to do that, which I'm not great at, and I still love it. And my dad got very sick and died between uh, undergrad and grad school, and I developed agoraphobia. I literally, my system became so very anxious that I yeah, didn't want to leave the house. That is not a way to live a life. And I'm a very active human who does many things. So, of course, we know we can treat that with medicine and psychiatric care, and I did all of that. But dance had always been in my life. And guess what? Being agoraphobic and going to a dance class don't go together. So I began to go to dance classes and stand in the corner by the door. I was cool. I found my way to do it without looking too freaky in case I needed to run away. And I developed more and more of a sense of coming into my body. As soon as I did that, the anxiety disappeared. And I always want listeners to know this is anecdotal, friends. This isn't every human who moves their body no longer has anxiety. But I became obsessed with learning everything about body-mind connection And I enrolled in different trainings in expressive arts therapies, which include dance, movement, writing, and drawing. Mm -hmm. For listeners who are in California, they're very easy to find in other parts of the country. You know, they might be a little harder to find. But I was in Philadelphia, and I immediately began training in the world of body-mind, went to grad school, and since then, I've never stopped learning. And anxiety comes and goes. It's part of my DNA. It's part of my system. And I know uh, it is very not fun to be there. So I have my system that I use for myself. Everyone's anxiety is a little different, but we all know there's the tightness in the body. There could be uh, changes in skin temperature. There's hypervigilance. We can go into hyperarousal or hypoarousal. So thank God for our glorious, uh, you know, vagus nerve. So I've found ways to, over the years, work this anxiety and, and work the magic But yes, it took years and years of learning through different dance therapy trainings, movement-based trainings, and so on. And uh, I hope to move for a long time. So in your practice, you do individual psychotherapy, and you kind of presented to us how you might do that um, with an individual client. My question is, in your groups, what do those look like? Oh, Josephine. Well, that's, you know, the name which people sometimes make fun of. I had a boyfriend once who made a website called Dance Your Bris. We, this is hilarious to me, people. Dancer Bliss is a very hokey name, which I love to death. So Dancer Bliss simply means move your body and feel good. The groups look like similar to a yoga experience. Let's start with a 45-minute group at a re- resort like Canyon Ranch or another place where I might teach. It's getting a group of humans in a space who begin not knowing each other and maybe feeling self-conscious. Having a teacher guide them and lead them in a way to find how every part of this body actually wants to move. So I already know that we hold massive tension in our shoulders and our hips and our jaw. So my first rule of thumb is cheat with music. Music is so great. We've got Motown. We've got slinky jazz. We've got drums. We've got, you know, salsa. We have so much fantastic music. I begin to put the music on and I can see people's nervous systems kind of soften. So we're going to move and groove and come into something that is a bit big and wild or not. With me leading you, I might say something like dance from your wrists. See how your wrists might. And for the listeners, I'm just twirling my wrists, right? 
And now dance from your wrists and your elbows. So we're very nicely being guided into ways of letting the body relax. We are being instructed. I don't just say, hey, kids, yo, peace out, dance. I'm giving you just enough instruction to inspire movements. We dance in different forms, even a little robot dance. Um, and we also always have the option of standing, sitting, or lying down. I dance with people of all sizes and all levels of abilities. And I've had some injuries and knee surgeries and things. So sometimes I've had to dance in a chair, uh, which is no fun, but it's better than nothing, of course. Uh, we then take a break. And if it's a longer workshop, we get pastel to paper and we dance with our hands, sometimes with our non-dominant hand, which really gets rid of any perfectionism that might be in the space. And uh, without sounding too hokey, we then write some poetry and boom, bada bing. It's incredibly fun. It's such a playground. It's so playful and it's tremendously psychotherapeutic. I work with uh, students who are dealing with grief and loss and anxiety and depression and, um, of course, have their practitioners that they see in addition to me. But what fun we have in just letting go and seeing how our body can lead us into so much joy. So do you, you consider yourself a dance therapist? Yes, and I am a, a registered expressive arts therapist which uh, is a REIT, R-E-A-T. And I also do straight up seated therapy, just like so many of us do. Um, and I would say my bread and butter of clients are seeing me for psychotherapy that is 100% talking. Mm -hmm. And I would say that a small group of people see me for movement-based. That's gotten less and less and less over the years, actually, because I'm teaching so much more. And if people want that juiciness, they come to the workshop. So in a sense, forgive me if I've been probably a little confusing, there are two different things, these great classes and workshops, but also in the psychotherapy session, I'm always available to help people continue to be embodied. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, the main word of today. How can we more live in our body? Whether in our psychotherapy session, can we notice if we're tense? Can we soften things? Can we have a practitioner or a psychotherapist who helps us feel safe? And then, of course, in the workshops, it's almost like cheating. It's like it's so easy when we come together and take our shoes off and come into a space. Hmm. Well, if the listener wants to learn more about this approach to therapy, what are some resources you you like or that you sure. might recommend to some of your clients? Sure. I have a couple of books I'll show you in a sec. I also want to say if someone's really looking for the dance part of it, maybe groups and things, you can easily just Google conscious dance, ecstatic dance. Mm -hmm. Dance Your Bliss, Five Rhythms, Journey Dance. I know, right? It's endless. You can literally Google any of those terms and you will... And Nia is a great one too. We've all heard of, I think, that's gotten large over the years. And then for the psychotherapist who's like, wait, no, I'm not going to dance. It's not my jam, but I desperately want to be a more embodied person. I brought a couple of books with me because we all deserve to live in our bodies and feel them and feel what they give us. One of them is called Body Mind Psychotherapy by a great teacher of mine, Susan Apotion. And the other one is Your Body Speaks Its Mind by Stanley Kellerman. There's so much more. Watch out. The rabbit hole is a lot of fun. I just want to say, you know, to sit with clients all day long, you really want to be present. And the way that we can immediately be present is by utilizing that which we have in the body, all the resources of relaxation, openness, awareness, breath, stretching between clients, please. Um, and a great, beautiful baby step to take, go to a yoga class. They're all around and they feel amazing. And I would just say to the listener, remember you have a body, you live in a body, treat it kindly with compassion. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you for last words, but you beat me to it. <laughs> I might have one more. Everyone is a natural dancer, in my opinion. Everyone has rhythm, whether we know it or not. And for the engineers and people who say to me, I don't do this. You know, you can lift weights and feel embodied. You can play golf and feel embodied. I want everyone, you know, my mission is may we all utilize our bodies in a way that feels great. We will, in so many ways, I think, be healthier, happier, right. better people for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I will make sure that your information is on the episode description. So if someone wants to learn more about the groups that you do or the individual psychotherapy work that you do, that that's easy to find. And I'll also put links to those two books you recommended on the episode description so people can check those out too. 
Thank you, Josephine. This has been yeah. such a blast. Thanks. I want to I want to go to one of your retreats. You Sign will. me up. <laughs> I will do. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks okay. for being on. This has been Mind Stories with me, Josephine McNary of Cal Psychiatry. With online psychiatry in California and 13 offices throughout Southern California and the Bay Area, Cal Psychiatry specializes in medication management, ADHD, anxiety disorders, alternative therapies, women's mental health, and more. Visit us at calpsychiatry.com and let us help you get back to your true self. Thanks for listening to Mind Stories and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.